What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna give you guys my honest review about the G80M3. It's been about almost six plus months and it's been about 5,000 miles. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the G80M3 and what it's been like on owning this car. So owning this car for the past six months, the reliability of the car has been no problems. I've never had it not start on me. I've never left it stranded me on the road. Um, I know in the beginning when people got the G8X platforms, there was something wrong with the main shell bearing, which was like a small batch of production cars. Um, but that was corrected as soon as they realized there was a problem. Um, this S58 platform is known to be true and very strong. We've seen it with the X3Ms and also X4Ms. Those vehicles had the same platform and a lot of people has made a, a decent amount of power on those cars and it's held up pretty well. Obviously, these cars, the G, G8X platforms, they've only been on for the past uh, two plus years. So within those time period, we're gonna learn a little bit more about, you know, what major issues. And so far there's been no major issues at all. So I'm actually excited to see some of these people pushing these big powers on how much they could push the limit. I know I mentioned before, that the manual transmission it's limited because sometimes a stock clutch cannot hold the additional power when you're going to like stage two and after a while you may wear out the clutch and that's something that's minor you're just gonna have to change out the clutch to a more aggressive stage where you could kind of handle the power so for me i'm not doing that yet maybe later on but um, i don't see it in the near future like i said maybe later on when i get bored Honestly, the big takeaway about this car compared to my previous car is that this car feels just a little bit bigger. It definitely is not the same size as the F8X platform. You're looking at the interior space is a lot more roomier. Um, the trunk space is adequate. There's enough space for me as I get into the next stage of my life um, where my wife and I eventually want to have a grown family. I could throw a stroller back there. I could throw a car seat and be very comfortable. Um, there's definitely enough room, like I said, in the interior space and also the trunk space. Um, so for people that are going to the stage where there's life stages, right? Married, kids, and all that stuff. This is great for a daily driver where you're not limited um, amount of room you have. Sure, this is not an SUV, this is not an X3, X4, um, but this does accommodate a lot more room than you might need sometimes. But I have to say, that hasn't been a downside of it. I know when I first got into the car, uh, getting into the car, you definitely feel how big it is. When I first got into it um, at the BMW Performance Center, you definitely notice how large and long the hood is um, compared to where you're seating at. Um, what's very different about this car compared to um, my other cars is that this carbon bucket seats allows you to get into a low seating position. So the amplified experience of owning this car, taking it on the local roads, where you're actually able to kind of test it a little bit, the lower seating position definitely amplifies the driving experience. It definitely makes it more fulfilling. And um, owning this car right now has been amazing. I can't wait to see the progression of it. Um, and in future videos that you may see before this or after this, um, we're gonna get into that. So when I first bought this car, one of my concerns for myself is how are these seats are gonna wear. So far my seats have been looking like it's fresh, brand new since day one. I've been practicing um, the ways of getting in and out of the seats and I developed a method for myself, which I made a whole video on, on how to get in and out of the carbon bucket seats. And it's that method has preserved my bolsters and I don't need to buy the side bolster um, protectors from IND. It does help on protecting your side bolsters, but I think it looks off when you look into the car. I think it looks out of place. Sure, it makes it subtle and does protect it, but if you're able to practice something where you're getting in and out without you know, causing a lot of wear and tear, again, I made a full video about that and that allows me to preserve these bolsters. So with going with that, the quality of this car from my first, uh, observation in the first six months and 5,000 miles has been a lot better um, than I expected. You know, the creature comforts, the buttons that surround you in, in the center console, everything feels a little bit more premium than the last generation. So owning this car, what I realized too in the past five, six months is that 
Even with an exhaust, if I leave it in uh, comfort mode with the valves closed, this car is pretty quiet. When it comes to driving on the highway, the road noise, BMW has made this car a lot more insulated where you're not hearing the exterior noise, you're not hearing the road noise, and it doesn't feel like a normal 3 Series. Back in the day, the normal 3 Series, you would hear all um, the road noise, you'd hear a little bit more wind, but the insulation on this car, they stepped it up a notch. And it does feel like it's the next stage, like a 5 Series and things like that. But I gotta say, the insulation, it's very comfortable. You don't hear um, the tires and stuff. You know, it is not as pronounced as it was in the last generation. And one of the first things I should probably mention in the beginning is that this car has an aggressive styling when it comes to the exterior. And obviously everybody knows when BMW first released this model to, the, to society, one of the biggest controversial um, aspects of it was the front grille. The front grille is obviously massive, um, and people said this a lot, is that it looks a lot better in person. And I have to say, when I first saw it, I was kind of skeptical, but I knew I had to reserve my opinion until I saw it in person. And that's how I feel about the M2. But when you look at this car in person, and you're standing next to it, you're seeing all the aggressive features coming from the headlights, um, the front grille, and there's certain angles where obviously it looks pretty bad, and that's with any car, right? There's always certain angles where any car looks bad, but I gotta tell you this, this has grown on a lot of people. You definitely see a lot of people jumping into the new platform, and what shows about that is that people are actually modifying their cars, and it's been convincing a lot of people that, hey, this, this is pretty awesome. And I have to say, um, I can't wait to start modifying it to a point where it's gonna be to my touch, and slowly but slowly you'll see it in this channel and it's probably gonna convince a lot of you guys that this might be the next car for you. And I'm, I'm gonna be totally honest, I've received a couple DMs from people and they're like, yeah, I think it's growing on me. And I've received some comments and I think people are saying it's definitely growing on you. But the aggressive styling, the aggressive wide fenders in the rear, it just makes it really um, pronounced. And when you look at it, it looks absolutely amazing. So I have to say, besides the aggressiveness of the looks of this car, it does match the power plant. The S58 power plant is known to be very stout. It's known to hold a lot of power and it's known to sound a little bit better than the previous generation. So with that being said, there's definitely enough power in this car, especially the all wheel drive and also the competition rear wheel drive. Uh, these cars come, I guess, underrated from factory. But when you're driving in this car, even in the automatic version, and obviously I have the manual, the power delivery feels really great. Um, what I notice is that the power, which we'll get into the cons a little bit, it, it's, it's great up on top. Anything above 4,000 RPMs, it pulls, and it's, it's very strong, and it goes all the way to red line. And it feels like it's a freight train sometimes. Just be the amount of power I'm not used to, especially for my last um, M3. So some of the main things that I liked about this car is the creature comfort, right? You're talking about the heads-up display. Um, the 360 cameras are so amazing, especially when I lower the car and have a front lip. I'm going to be able to gauge exactly where I need to stop, um, especially with the trunk too. Having the electronic trunk, it's been pretty good. A click of a button, I could throw my groceries in, and a click of a button, I could close it. Um, it's been actually nice to have that. I know in previous generations that never existed and it may have existed in the M5, but not in the M3s. Um, so I have to say the Creature Comforts has been pretty good. Um, uh, this car is very technologically um, driven. Um, I know the newer ones with the ID8, the iDrive 8 is going to be on a different level, but I definitely admire the ID7. ID7, I think in my personal opinion, is gonna be one of those cars. For example, when I mean one of those cars, um, for the E9X platform, a lot of people right now are looking for a slick top E90 M3 manual with a um, no iDrive. So basically a single hump. That is very sought out. I'm not sure why. I think it's because it just looks cleaner, it's more rare. Um, there was a lot more with uh, the iDrives being made um, and obviously slick top is a lot more rare than 
I think a lot of them do come with uh, moon roofs or sun roofs. And um, I gotta say, at least with this, the iDrive 7, I think that's gonna be more sought out as we get into, um, as this car ages in generation. I think a lot of people are gonna be looking for the iDrive 7 because it has only been around for the past, you know, 2021 and also 2022 models. I know that in 2023, they got they discontinued it and went over to the iDrive 8. Um, that itself, it's been very mixed reviews. I know when it first came out, and this is how it is. When things first come out, a lot of people, they don't like it at first. I think people just need to get to get used to it or they just need to see it in person. Um, but sometimes it just doesn't grow on people. But I have to say, I definitely think the iDrive 7 is definitely one of those things where people look for when they're buying a used one. So owning this car, one of the things that I didn't like is definitely the ride height. And I think the ride height has been an issue with a lot of previous generations. Um, I definitely think the E9X, they actually had it a little bit more dialed in. Even with the competition, the ride height doesn't look that bad. But when it comes to this, the stock ride height is absolutely absurd. Um, I know it's probably performance driven on their part, but as a enthusiast that likes to modify their cars, I definitely think it's, it's, it's odd. You know, we have a three inch lift, you know, um, that I can fit three fingers in and it's pretty, I guess, awkward to look at, especially since, you know, it, it's probably one of the downfalls of the looks of this car. But that's a simple modification that you can do, which I'm gonna be doing this upcoming week. And I'm very excited to get that done. It's funny too, I think for the longest time, this car has been the punching bag for the BMW M models. Um, and I say for the most part, right? Because the new one, the new M2 has been the new punching bag. And I think a lot of people are hating that, but waiting patiently is D. If you guys don't know what D is, D is, this new interactive uh, thing they got going on with BMW, that is currently gonna be the next punching bag after them too. But what really changes my mind when I see it modified, especially with this, when I saw this car being modified at shows, I, I remember the first time I saw a really good modified one was actually at Impact 2021. Auto Couture had a Brooklyn Gray with HRVs lowered, front lip, and it looked absolutely amazing. And that's what really kind of like drew my attention of this car. But at that mindset, I was not gonna get rid of the F80 M3 and um, just things worked out. And here I am with this car behind me. It's been a great six months. It's been a, a lovely 5,000 miles on the car. So I have to say BMW, and I'm sure other, other uh, manufacturers do the same thing. Active sound, active sound has been some of the things that I've hated. Um, when you're driving this car, you're gonna have fake noise being pumped in, and that goes through all your speakers, and that's something that you're gonna have to either disable from Beamer code, and I've done that, and it's definitely allowed me to enjoy the exhaust note um, naturally. Um, definitely going with the exhaust note and stuff is that these burbles on this, platform is sometimes just way too much. I think, I honestly don't, I don't know what the reasoning is that they made burbles. I think it's because maybe they thought this younger generation, all these people with the burble tunes, uh, they wanted to gear it towards them. Uh, I think you guys kind of ruined it, but I, I'm not a big fan of burbles. I'm still trying to find another method of kind of containing the burbles. Um, I know one of the ways I can do it is to send my DME over to Femto, unlock it, be able to customize the tune. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to have to suck it up for now. I know when I leave it in M1 mode, it's tamed, but the valves are not fully open. I'm not able to enjoy um, the nice loud exhaust, but it's a, it's, a, it's a middle mix I have to figure out. But it's not a make or break, but I definitely have to say owning this car, in the past 5,000 miles, one of the most things that you notice is the burbles are pretty ob obnoxious sometimes. So when I talked about how the cabin is very suppressed from the exterior noise, it's a good thing and also a bad thing. One bad thing about it is that it definitely suppresses the sound of the exhaust. I know this car is loud from the exterior, but sometimes when the windows are rolled up, it kind of suppresses the noise of the exhaust, um, which is a downside if you're really that type of enthusiast. So that's something you should need to look at. Obviously there's more methods of making it more pronounced, right? Full catless downpipe, 
um, and just change different variations of an exhaust. Um, but I have to say this current exhaust setup right now that I have, it's been absolutely, I love it. It's, it's one of one, there's nobody else that has it right now. Um, and in that video that you, you may have seen before this, Active is not in the process of making a new one, so we'll see. Um, I'm sure if you guys email them enough, maybe the things would change. So I know I mentioned earlier about the power delivery. The power delivery is pretty amazing, but I will notice that there is a turbo lag. There is a lag below 4,000 RPMs. I think it might be below 41, 4,200 RPMs that your boost does not kick in at that point. There is a lag and I've noticed it and pretty much just driving around, you know, doing a couple of downshifts. And when I'm not shifting all the way to like red line sometimes, and I'm going to the next gear, I feel with the manual is that you're dumping into a point where you're in that lower RPMs and you're still at that lag point. So you still feel that. Obviously there's many different ways to get rid of that is with the tune. Um, as of right now, I'm not gonna tune the car. I wanna do other things before I get to that point where I wanna make more power. But those are things I've noticed in the past 5,000 miles and those are the things that I've noticed in the past six plus months. Uh, again, this car is not my daily, but as I continue to make content, as I continue to take you guys along the process, I'll give you guys reviews and updates, anything that I've noticed differently. Um, but I gotta say, I, I really love this car. Um, as I keep adding modifications to this car, I think I'm gonna be absolutely enjoying it a lot more. Um, we all know when you start modifying the car, making the car the way you want and personalize it the way you want, it becomes a different animal. And so far, with the exhaust and everything, it's becoming that animal. But I think once I throw on a set of wheels, along with the proper suspension, and again, I'm gonna give you guys a hint, there's gonna be two versions of the suspension I'm doing, a entry level and also a more complex level. And hopefully that gives you guys some um, hints of what's to come. But I have to say, BMW definitely created an amazing machine behind me. I'm very thankful to be able to own it. And I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. The support has been absolutely amazing. And I just have to throw that in there because I appreciate everybody um, watching the videos, liking the videos, and even just liking, you know. But other than that, I wanna thank you guys again for watching this video, and I will see you guys on the next video.